Hello and welcome back to Mastering Statistics. Here we're going to get our, our hands dirty just a little bit and start talking about the F distribution but talking about the tables that you're going to use to solve every one of these problems. Now it does get a tiny bit confusing because unlike some of the other distributions, the F distribution is actually a whole series of tables. So you're going to have many pages in the back of your book and it's tough in the beginning to figure out what you need to do or which table to use. So I'm going to try to break it down for you. In order for you to understand this, I need you to keep this mental image in your head. All right, We have this idea of the F distribution. I'm going to sketch it over here for you so that you can kind of have it in your head. It kind of is lopsided. It goes up and then it's very much skewed like this. So this is the values of F along this axis. We start at zero and then we go one, two, three, four, five and so on and so on up to infinity like this. And so the distribution never really ends. It just kind of approaches the axis like this. And it's always skewed to the right like this. All right, now the thing is, is that when you're using the tables in the back of the book, you're really going to be trying to find what we call a critical value. And that critical value for these types of problems, for the hypothesis testing problems we're going to do, is called F sub alpha. And F sub alpha is just a, a value of F off of that table. And it's the special value of F that has as its area to the right-hand side under this curve the value of alpha, which is the level of significance. So for your problem, you might have a 90% level of confidence. Remember, level of confidence is C. 1 minus C is a level of significance. That we, that's what we call alpha. So typical values of alpha might be 0.1. That would correspond to 90% uh, level of confidence. Um, level of significance might be 0.05. You take 1 minus 0.05, you're going to get 95% level of confidence and so on. So typically you're doing 90% level of confidence, 95% or 99% level of confidence. So the most common values of alpha that you're going to see in these problems that you're really doing is going to be 0 0.05, 0 0.10, and then 0 0.01. Because this one, when you take 1 minus this, it's going to correspond to 0.95, which is 95% level of confidence. 1 minus this is going to be 90% level of confidence. 1 minus this is going to be 99 level of confidence. There's no point in statistics in doing a problem with 70% level of confidence. It's worthless. So you're always going to see values of alpha that are going to be pretty much these three values uh, there. So when you're trying to use these tables, you're really just trying to read the value of F off the table that gives you your level of significance, which is the shaded area under the right. So depending on what value you have here, you're going to have a different value of F to give you the shaded region. But the trick is, is that this entire curve depends on alpha, the level of significance for your problem. It also depends on how many people you sample. That's what we call the degree of freedom. But in this case, since you have two variances, you have a degree of freedom of the numerator and a degree of freedom of the denominator. Let me refresh your memory on that. The test statistic that we're going to use to, to determine if we reject or fail to reject is going to be the ratio of population 1 uh, and their uh, 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 measurement uh, variance, or I should say sample variance, and population 2 sample variance, right? So that's what we call in the tables you're going to see numerator and denominator. This is the numerator they're talking about, the denominator that, that they're talking about. From this, or this uh, uh, sample variance that you got came from N1 samples, and this guy came from N2 samples. Right. So the bottom line is, and I'm going to show you a chart here in just a second, the bottom line is we're going to show you a table in just a second, and you're going to have to, to know uh, how many samples you drew from population one, how many samples you drew from population two, and then we're going to be using that to, to read off the values. So let me just show you what a typical F distribution uh, table looks like. So here's the first one, and I'm going to kind of pull down here for you. And yours is going to look different for sure. The number of decimals that you have uh, in, your, in your table and uh, exactly how it's set up is going to be different depending on how your book is set up. This is just one of them. So this tells you F values for alpha 0 0.01. Okay. Notice that it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 along the top, and then it goes way down here, and I can drag the table up so you can see the bottom. It goes, it goes down really far. What you're looking at here is a table of values of F. You read values of F off the table. F sub alpha is what you're trying to read out of here. It's going to be one of these values. And notice that this is for alpha 0.01. So that means that, that every value here that you pull out of here 
is going to give you an area to the right, a level of significance of 0.01. So if you were doing a problem with a right tail distribution, alpha 0.01, you have to use this chart. If you were doing a problem with a different, uh, like 0.05 alpha, you wouldn't use this chart at all. You'd have to use a different chart. So you have to read the very top of the chart first of all. Then when you're, when you're actually doing the uh, problem, you're going to have so many samples drawn from population one and so many samples, so many samples drawn from population two. Remember, the degree of freedom is just equal to the number of samples minus one. So this table doesn't really say it, but most books say degree of freedom of the numerator up here and degree of freedom of the denominator on the left-hand side. So these numbers here are the degrees of freedom of the numerator of this fraction, which basically just means how many samples did you draw from population one minus one. So let's say we drew six samples from population one. Well, we don't go to six here because the degree of freedom is six minus one. So we would go to five, right? So we'd be looking in this column. Now this guy is the degrees of freedom of the denominator. And like I say, your book might actually have it printed there, but this, this book doesn't. But this is the degrees of freedom of the numerator, degrees of freedom of the denominator. Let's say you drew, uh, uh, let's say again, six samples from the denominator. Now you don't go to six here because the degree of freedom is actually six minus one, which is five. So for this problem, since you drew six samples from the top, from the numerator or from population one, and six samples from the denominator, the degree of freedom of the numerator is this. The degree of freedom of the denominator is this, and you just look for the intersection. So for this problem, it would be this right here, 10.97. And that means the f value, if you plotted this on graph paper, would be 10.97, the value of f, that would give you a shaded area of 0.01 to the right. So that's why I say it's a little confusing, because you have to know what level of significance you're dealing with, then you have to choose the correct table to use, and then you have to look at how many samples you do from population one, that's what we call the numerator, it's number of samples from population two, subtract one off each one, and then go column and row to find the correct value, and that value is giving you the area off to the right. So we're going to do a lot of problems to give you practice, but I just want to show you that. The other thing that makes confusing is notice that the numerator here goes up to nine, uh, but it doesn't go any higher. So that means that you can't draw more than ten samples and use this table. So in your book, you're going to have multiple tables even for alpha 0.01. Notice that's alpha 0.01. So let me scoot this out of the way and drag this up and show you that this is the next, basically the next page in the table. Notice this says alpha 0.01. So this is exactly the same level of significance, but this one starts at 10 and goes on to infinity. Now, basically it's a continuation of the table. So if you had let's say 16 samples from population one, then the degree of freedom would be 16 minus one, which is 15. You would have to go to, to column number 15 and use this column, which was not on the other table. So you have to choose the correct level of significance table, and then you have to go find the right table that has the degree of freedom of your numerator and the degree of freedom of your denominator. But that's really as simple as it gets. Notice that you don't have every single value here. Um, it's just because you'd be printing pages and pages and pages out of a book. There, there are formulas out there, you know, uh, computer programs that can calculate any values you want, but as far as tables go, uh, you're not going to have every single value there. So again, alpha 0.01, we had the first table and we had the second table, which continues it. Let me go on and just show you really quickly. Now, what if you're not doing a program, a problem with alpha 0.01? Let's say you're doing uh, something with a 95% level of confidence. One minus that, one minus 0.95 would mean alpha is 0.05, which is 0.05 level of significance. This is the table that you would use for 0.05 level of significance. But notice it's the same song and dance. You have numbers across the top, numbers across the side. This is the, is the degree of freedom of the numerator. This is the degree of freedom of the denominator. So you just look how many samples did I draw from population one, how many samples did I draw from population two, subtract one from each one of those, and those are the columns that I'm reading off. If I read a value of 2.9, that means that the value of f is 2.9. That gives me an area to the right of 0.05. So it all depends on three variables, and that's why there's so many tables. Notice this only goes up uh, along the bottom here. It goes down you know, down this way, very high numbers, but when we go uh, off to the right, it only goes up to nine, so the same thing. You have to, generally the book split the, the tables up uh, there, so here's the other half of that table. Again, it's the same level of significance and it's continuing from 10 on, and then you have the same columns again. So you just have to find the correct page. I'll show you one more because they're just so common. 
Here's the other one that you're going to come across. This is for alpha of 0 0.10. Remember I told you there was three very common ones. This is going to correspond to a level of confidence of 90% because 1 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.1. So this is your 90% level of confidence or 0.1 level of significance. Again, the table goes up to 9 and then goes really high this direction. If you have more samples than, than you have columns here, then you're going to have to go and find the, the other half of that table, which I've kind of have down here just to show you. Uh, same thing, same level of significance, it just starts at the higher number and it continues on uh, like this. So again, don't forget what we're using this table for. All we're trying to do is find this critical value of f. We call it f sub alpha. It's basically the value of f that gives us a shaded area to the right that corresponds to our level of significance for our problem. That's going to end up being our hurdle that we have to jump over for our rejection region that we've talked about in, in, in hypothesis testing for, for a lot, uh, for a long time. So when you're reading values off of this chart, all you're doing is you're taking into account the level of significance and you have the number of samples minus one here and the number of samples minus one for the population two to find that value of f that gives us the proper uh, shaded region for our, the level of significance for our problem. All right. Now what we're going to do here in just a second is we're going to do a couple of quick exercises. They're not going to be complete problems, but quick exercises to, um, to read the correct values off the chart. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and do a couple of quick problems uh, just to show you how to use these tables. And again, in the back of your head, I'm going to just kind of sketch in very small little area here. Your F distribution generally looks like this. And so here's the value of F. This is zero. And in general, what you're trying to find is this critical value we call F sub alpha that has the shaded region to the right of alpha. All of these tables are returning the, the shaded region to the right of F. Uh, or I should say all of these tables are giving you the value of f that gives you the shaded region to the right, which we call alpha. So they're all set up to, to be correlated to that right-hand shaded region. And then you have to kind of remember that. All right, so let's do the first one really quickly. We'll do a quick example. What if alpha, the level of significance in a problem, was 0 0.05? First, before we go any further, what level of confidence is that? Well, 1 minus 0 0.05 is 0.95, which is 95%. So this corresponds to 95% level of confidence for whatever test I'm doing. And let's say, it doesn't matter what I'm you know, studying, but let's just say that for population number one, uh, I choose seven samples. And from population two, I choose five samples. So what I want you to do is find this critical value F sub alpha. You see, after you do a lot of these problems, you'll start to realize that they're all the same after a while. So you know, I could be comparing the, the two variances in the, in the IQ, we talked about IQ before, of two different populations of people. One of them from North America, one of them from, from South America, or one of them from Mars and one of them from Venus, if there's aliens on there, right? And I choose seven people from population one, and I choose five people from population two. Now, I cannot just use these numbers because this is the degree of freedom of the numerator, that's population one, and this is the degree of freedom of the denominator, which is population two. Right? But these are not degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom, the degrees of freedom is going to be in this case 7 minus 1, which is 6. And in this case, the degree of freedom for this denominator is 5 minus 1, which equals 4. Those are the numbers that you use in the table. Never use the samples, always use the samples minus 1, basically. Population 1 is always what you're reading off the top. Population 2 is always what you're reading down the side. So the first thing is to know that we have the correct table pulled out. Alpha is 0.05, so we're looking at the correct table. All right, so what you do is you look at this guy's, the degree of freedom of the numerator here, uh, which we'll get to later when we talk about the test statistic, but this is always the numerator. This is the degree of freedom of the denominator. So we go look at 6 here. We go look at 4 here, and we race across and look for the intersection right here where they cross 6.16. So what we have found is that F sub alpha is 6.16, and that's the answer. Now, this is not a complete problem, so you'll never really be asked that on a test, but you will need to find this in order to do the hypothesis test, because remember, 
generally we define our rejection region, right? We try to figure out what critical value do we need to cross in order to reject or fail to reject. Well, this is going to end up being the critical value. So it's important. 6.16. Now your table might have more digits here and so on, but what this value is telling you is, is if you go and plot this F distribution on a piece of paper, then the value of 6.16 here along this axis, this value of F, is what gives us a shaded region to the right of 0.05. That's all it's telling you. All right. We'll do one more real quick. Let's say we have, and we know from our problem, alpha is 0 0.10. And let's say we sample from population one, could be anything, could be the life, uh, the variance in the life expectancy of smokers. You know, population one could be smokers, population two could be non-smokers. So we, we might think there's a different variance in the length of the average lifespan, right? So from population one, we talk to eight people or we sample eight people. And from population two, we do 10 people. And what we're trying to find is this critical value of alpha that gives us an area of 0 0.10 to the right. That's all we want, the critical value of, of, of F, I should say, the critical value of F that gives us this area to the right. First of all, we have to make sure we're using the correct table. This is a table for alpha 0.05. So every one of these values in this table is going to give us an area of 0.05 to the right just for different combinations of whatever you've sampled. But every one of these values, that's another way to look at the table. Every value in here gives you an area of this to the right for different problems. Maybe one problem you draw eight from population one and five from population two. Another problem you draw four from population one and 20 from population two. So you get different numbers depending on the problem, but every one of these are giving you an area of 0.05 to the right. My problem is not uh, an alpha of 0.05. My problem uh, has a level of significance of 0.1. So every value in this table is gonna be giving me an area of 0.1 to the right. So these numbers are not what I use, though, because the degree of freedom is going to be 8 minus 1, which is 7. The degree of freedom of this is 10 minus 1, which is 9. So I'm going to look, again, this is population 1. For the numerator, 7 is right here, 9 is right here, so I go over here, across this, and it should be 2.51. This value right here, where they intersect 9 and 7 right there, 2.51, so 2.51. So if we were doing a hypothesis testing problem, that would be the critical value that would define a rejection region. We'll get to that in the next lesson. We'll, we'll do an actual problem and I'll show you. Uh, but this is the critical value of alpha. So this 2.51 is the place here in the graph that gives us an area to the right corresponding to this. So now you understand why there's so many pages in the back of the book, because you have to find the one that has the right level of significance, and also you, you might have to go over to, if you had more samples, you might have to go to the next page of this table over here. Uh, to get to, to the right degree of freedom. So make sure you understand this uh, because we're going to use it in every single problem. You will get more practice with it, I promise, because we have to do it a lot. So why don't you go ahead and, and stop with me now, follow me to the next lesson. We're going to put it all together and actually do a real problem and you'll see how easy it is once we can put all the pieces together.